Jesus Christ was so great, they stole him from us. Bring it out. They painted him to look like them. Bring right. That's how great our Messiah is. That they made him look like them. Right. Right. Huh? Understand that. And in the distance, if you ain't get it, it was never meant it. The spirit probably never bear with us. If it did, you would roll with us. We the chosen, we the go get us. This one here for the heathens. We the new, y'all the old school. King David with the dance moves. Black Messiah with the water shoes. Backstroking on them. Watch out, he got the water moves. Backstroking on them. Set the stone, we can never lose. Into corners 
I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. That's why they tell you all the Israelites, they uh, they, they disappear, they mixed in with all the other nations. They right. don't exist right. no more. But we got one tribe over there in Israel right now. Those, you know, those Caucasian people. No, that ain't Israel. The Israelites are right in front of you. That's the right. Israelites are right here washing their cars right. on the Sabbath day. That's right. That's what they're not supposed to be doing. The very reason we got in this situation because we keep breaking God's law. We got to stop that. All through the Bible, God is insulting us. Give me Isaiah 1 and 3. Because not only do you not know who you are, you, you, you don't even think to contemplate, hey, who were we before slavery? Because that's all the history they ever give us. They give us, okay, you were a slave, you picked the cotton, and then came the civil rights. And that's it. That don't make no sense. Bring it up. That's not a history. Bring it up. Read the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Bring it up. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. So you have an ox and an ass, a jackass, two dumb animals on the farm. But at least, read on. But Israel does not know. Stop. At least an ox know who his owner is. But Israel don't know. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, y'all don't even consider. And a jackass, you can lead him 10 miles away, he can find his way home. But you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans think Africa is your motherland. No, let me get motherland. Understand something. Your home is not Africa, the continent. There are many countries in Africa. Your home is Jerusalem, That's right. the number one property on the earth. Peace up. From there, the entire earth will be ruled forever. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Read! But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is your motherland, not Africa, and yes, Israel is a part of Africa. That's right. It is not part of the Middle East. You remember? It was the land of Canaan. That's right. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's get how we got here. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Because y'all think that a major event that happened on the earth, the transatlantic slave trade, ain't in the Bible. Every major event that has ever happened is in the Bible. Right, right, right. It's just that you've been lied to. Right. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read up. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with shit. Now he said he would bring you into Egypt again. Did we walk back into Egypt? No, we did not walk back into Egypt. So what does he mean by Egypt again? Let's find out. Give me Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. Because here, you're, this is the first time you're ever going to hear this Bible correctly. This is the first time that people are going to tell you the truth. Bring it out. Read Exodus chapter 20 in verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. So whenever you hear Egypt in the Bible, think slavery, got it? Good. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With Shit. With what? With shit. So the transatlantic slave trade is in the Bible. That's right. Only the Israelites went into slavery. Africans sold Israelites into slavery. Because I keep Bring hearing all the time out. Bring it that out. dumb and stupid doctrine that we're Africans. Let me in Joel chapter 3, verse 6. Bring it out. The verse, give me the verse where Tyree and Sidon. So understand something. It was the Africans, the king, the homie, and the Arabs 
that sold you Israelites into slavery. Got that? Read. Joel chapter three, verse three. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine right. that they might drink. Yea, and what have ye to do with me? O Tyre and Zidane. Tyre and Zidane are African. They are the ones that sold us along with the Arabs in the Sub-Saharan slave trade. Uh, right. African and Arabs sold Israel. And they keep telling you to lie that you're African. Now that, that don't make no sense. But it's high time that you wake up out of sleep. Today you're learning the truth. Bring me the truth. Give me the truth. Matter of fact, give me John chapter 8, verse 32. Brother, do you have a question? But please be free. Feel free to come on over and ask us a question. Thank you for the drink. Thank you. Come on over and ask us a question, brother. We out here for you. Let me take a drink. No questions right now, just listen. You have no questions? All right, just listen. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Does God love everybody? I believe so. You believe so? Okay, I believe that too one time. One time I did. Until I read the scripture. That's right. Give me uh, Isaiah 40. Read it out. 15. Tell me what you think about this. Because when I read it, and we're going to get some more. We got lots more. Read the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. In verse 15, uh -huh. no. behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. So that's like a drop of a bucket, very small to God, go on. And are counted as the small dust of the balance. Uh-huh. Behold. So let me stop there. He's saying they're like a drop of a bucket. If you carry a bucket of water and you're real thirsty and you're out in the desert and a drop of uh, water comes out of that bucket, are you going to be very concerned with that drop of butt water? No, I guess if no. I'm in the desert. No, that's how God looks at the other races of people. Go on. No. Behold, he taketh up the aisles as a very little thing. All right, that's good. Give me second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. Here's another scripture. Verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. As what? Are as nothing. Officer, God loves everybody. All nations before him are as nothing. Bring it out. Hey, I didn't write this Bible. Did you write this Bible? Did any of these other people write this Bible? No. God is saying all the other nations are as nothing. Okay? That's why, I see, like I said, I used to believe just like you. But then I read the Bible, and that changed everything. Because you know, just as I know, up in the Christianity church, they don't read the Bible. They right. read you one scripture, they beat that tamarind to death, they pass around that plate multiple times, Bring it and out. they come back next week, nigga. That's, right. it out. That's what they Bring say. It out. Teach. Yeah. Give me second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 54. How you doing, sis? Welcome. You're amongst your people. You are the children of Israel, the Bible speaks of. Yes. You know that? Yes. Oh, praise. Yes. The Read. book of 2 Ezra, chapter 6 and verse 54. Read uh -huh. up. And after these, Adam, also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So all the other races come from Adam, like we was taught, right? Right? All the other races come from Adam. Go on. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Who was the people that God chose? Israel. Israel, who was the people that God chose? Israel. Right, he didn't choose nobody else, right? All through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. He only chose Israel. Right. Go on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. No, the whole world is for everybody. God made everybody. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. So hold on. The Bible said uh, that the world was made for our sakes. So it ain't, ever, it ain't for everybody else. We were supposed to rule this earth, but we wanted to be like the other nations, just like today. It ain't nothing changed, ain't nothing new under the sun. Is that it on that scripture? No. Keep on reading. Verse 56. As for the other people, as for the other people, 
which also come of Adam, they too come from Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. Wait a minute, we just heard this again, remember that? And Isaiah's sister, God was saying the other nations are nothing. Here we hear another scripture saying the other nations are nothing. He only chose Israel. Understand this. Let's get some more to uh, support that. Give me Revelations 20, 21 and 12. Yes, sir. Read the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Those are the ones who are getting to heaven. That's right. Now, did you hear us when we were preaching, we were bringing out, why did we come to this country? Why did we go into slavery? You heard that, because of our sins, right? And one of those sins that we, one of those laws that we were breaking, I want you to hear. Numbers 15, 38 to 40. The book of Numbers. Chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel. That's you, sis, the children of Israel. Go on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Okay, bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Go on. Throughout their generations. How long is throughout their generations, sis? Forever. 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 It, it doesn't change because it goes to the New Testament. Go on. And that they shall put upon the border, the fringe of the borders, a ribbon of blue. Put a ribbon of blue on your fringes. Go on. Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. It shall be unto you a contract. You ever heard of the word infringement of contract? That's why, it, that's why they have those words. Because the fringe institutes a blood contract with the nation of Israel with God. That's right. We're the only race that has that. Bring it Go out. on. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments that's of the why, Lord. That's the reason why we have to have the fringes. So that we will never forget, hey, I got to keep this commandment. Hey, I got to keep the Sabbath day. Hey, men got to have a beard. Hey, women got to wear dresses, not pants. Hey, so on and so forth. You yeah. understand that, sis? Yes. All right, we're going to get some of these more laws. How about uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 9? Because I see you have a long dress down to the foot. Not everybody wears that. Bring it out. Understand, and you already know. I'm not telling you anything new. But we're out here to teach our people. Read. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Because the shape of the woman's body and her appearance of her body, her, what I'm saying, the legs, not, that's for their husband. Right. It's not for every man to see. Right. Now, I know you, know you came up in a generation just like me where we do that. But this next generation is after us. They don't know that at all. That's they right. think this is normal. They think dressing like scantily and whorish is normal. That's not normal. Was that it for that scripture? With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. All right, praise the Lord. Now, how about, let's see. Okay, you got your head covered. All praises. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Bring it up. That's right. Because this is the reason why we must gather amongst ourselves. Because you can't, you cannot be amongst the heathen, you cannot be amongst your own people who are still wicked and expect to survive to the end. Bring it up. Expect to endure to the end. It just won't happen. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Read. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. As the manner of some of us are, go on. But exhorting one another. Strengthening one another, building each other up. Because I might come in, I might be weak, and this officer might build me, he'll see what's off my countenance and you know give me some scripture right. and help build me up for that day. All I had to do was just hear him. Right. That's what's the reason why we must gather amongst together. Because that's a commandment. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Bring it out. Bring it out. Now, are we supposed to gather with everybody? Because uh, you hear Christianity, we're supposed to gather amongst all races. 
God loves everybody. Even our oppressors. Love your enemies. No, no, it's not talking about that. When it says love your enemies, it's talking about the enemies of your people, not the enemies of the heathen races. Go on. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay! Gather hold together. Up, hold, hold up. Sis, listen to this. Listen to this. Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Uh-huh. Yeah. Gather your together. O nation, not desire. O nation, not desire. What race of people is not desired no matter where you go on this earth? Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Bring it out. They are hated. Why are those groups hated? Because everybody else knows where the Israelites except the Israelites. Right. That's crazy as heck when you think about it. Everybody else knows where the Israelites except the Israelites. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So, sis, you have a flyer. I got, I got. Oh. Somebody get her a flyer. She's already been in touch. Already been in touch? She's already been in touch? All right. All right. We're going to keep teaching our people. Just listen up. Give me Luke chapter 17, verse 26. Because understand something. You don't have much time, Israelites. You have a short window. Bring it it's out. It's called grace. But if you look at the news, it's about to end. Like you got a man in the Oval Office who is more than willing to push that button. That's right. You got somebody on the other side of the world that ain't about bowing down to the United States. And you have another country that has just been put on heavy sanctions. Excuse me. <clears throat> Iran, and they ain't about no games. Read the book of St. Luke. Chapter 17 and verse 25, 26. 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, what happened in the days of Noah, sister? And what happened afterwards? The flood, destruction. That's what happened. Go on. So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. No, when Christ comes back, he's going to forgive everybody. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So when Christ comes back, according to the Bible, he's going to kill the majority of people on the earth. That's right. right. Make no mistake about that. He is not coming to have a party. That's, That's right. why they Bring call it, it the great and terrible day of the Lord. Right. Right. Who is he going to kill? This is the question we got to ask ourselves. Give me Amos chapter 9, verse 10. Bring it out. Because... Okay, people, I'll think back when I didn't come into this truth. I knew he was going to kill somebody, but it ain't going to be me because I just claim Jesus and I'm saved. And I know that's how our people think, out. but that's not what the Bible teaches. Right. There's a criteria of who he's going to kill. Right. Read. Bring it up. The book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 10. Read. Oh, oh the sinners of the who? Oh, the sinners. Okay. Of my people shall die by the sword. So all the sinners of God's people, Israel, he's going to definitely kill. Here's the thing. In Christianity, none of them know what sin is. Right. But today, you're going to learn what sin is. Bring it out. Give me sin. Because we've asked dozens, hundreds, thousands of people, of our people, what sin? And they always give the same answer that ain't according to the Bible. Or it's anything that goes against God. Okay, what is it? And then they give some other answer that doesn't line up with the Bible. But we're going to read straight from the Bible as it is written, Thus saith the Lord. Read the book of First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So sin transgresses the law. Go on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you break the laws. So they said, no, the laws are done away with. You don't have to keep no laws. Just praise Jesus. But that doesn't make any sense. Go to me, Exodus. Are we going to go around killing people when it says thou shalt not kill? Are we going to go around committing adultery when it says thou shalt not commit adultery? What about the, the law saying... Uh, don't rape in Deuteronomy 23, 25. Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. How about this one? 
the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. When is the Sabbath day, sis? Today. Sabbath day is today. Did y'all hear that? Sabbath day is today. Right Sabbath day is not tomorrow. Yes, they keep you in sin for a reason. Give me Psalms chapter 81. Verse 13 and 14. Bring it out. Because that's not the only place that it says that. It says it everywhere. We're just going to give you the couple. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 81, verse 14. I should soon have subdued their enemies and give me, turned. Stop. Give me the one right before it. Psalms 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. If only my people would listen to me. This is what God is saying. If only my people, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, if you just listen to God, read, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies. He should have what? Have subdued their enemies. He gonna kill our enemies. That's what the scripture is saying. Is that it? and turn my hand against their adversaries. He says it twice so that in case you didn't get it the first time. So it's, it's, it behooves you blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians to turn back to the Lord God of Israel. Don't turn to these doctrines that are here in Babylon the Great. That's this right. country is going to be destroyed. Right. Shalom, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.